Hey guys, Woodruff here. Um, so let's go into some other complications that a client can have after a fracture. Because I talked about the two, uh, one of the two of the major acute ones. I didn't have a PowerPoint slides over, but I talked generally about how we're going to be worried about bleeding, um, hemodynamic stability for a patient after a fracture. But I'm also, you know, compartment syndrome, perfusion issue, um, fat embolism syndrome, neurological, um, respiratory, I think respiratory neurological issues for that one. So what other kind of problems can happen? Um, so other issues that can happen, I talked about these very briefly, um, but other things, a lot of them have to do with um, mobility, musculoskeletal system, or with, um, you know, general complications of immobility. Um, so first is muscle atrophy. You can kind of see it in this picture here where this person has a lot more muscle and tissue on this side rather than, um, it's my, I'll say my right. Um, it's their right too. Yeah, it should be their right too. Um, but they have a, a, an atrophied um, or loss of muscle tone due to disuse. So if you've ever had a cast on and had it taken off, um, this is like, I mean, the one side is going to usually be a significantly smaller than the other because you haven't been using as much. And a lot of times the other side has to compensate for the loss of strength on the side that's not working as well. Um, contractures looks like this um, here on the lower left um, where, um, like you mentioned, you see those nursing home patients that their arms are kind of stuck in and they can't um, extend them or you, um, it can't happen in the hands. It can happen in any joint really um, where it's in the same position for too long and it hasn't been stretched. Um, it's why it's so important for you as the nurse, like atrophy, you just do your best to work it and then you can build up its strength once, um, you know, it's out of the caster device. If they haven't been able to work it, you can get strength back up. Um, contractures, we can prevent as a nurse, decrease the risk by doing regular range of motion, especially in and around injuries. It's not like they have a broken leg, you have to find a way to bend it, um, but you need to work the joints around um, the um, problem. Then also making sure patients aren't staying in the same position all the time. Um, foot drop is going to be in this upper right hand. Um, picture where you can see normally, you know, like by wearing shoes and other things and by being up walking around, our feet stay in a normal anatomical position. But sometimes due to um, neurological issues, we talk about this when we talk about stroke um, or <clears throat> because someone has um, had an injury to the uh, limb, they can have what's called a foot drop. It's like a plantar flexion or it's flexed out um, as a result of, um, like I said, the injury. So um, usually what we do is we put them in these we call them foot drop boots, um, POTUS boots, things like that. Uh, and we put this on to keep that normal position. So the other thing I want to do is if a patient's not using a limb or has an injury to a limb, I try to keep it in the most normal anatomical position that I can um, to help to maintain its function. Other things that patients can complain about are things like muscle spasm. And I think we're going to be soon talking about muscle relaxers and stuff like that. That's the best way that I can help with that. Ooh, let's see if I can get to the next slide. All right. So other um, major complications are blood clots and infection. I don't have, I think on this one, maybe, yeah, it's, I think it's under kind of under infection. Um, you could kind of say it that way, but um, the other thing you want to consider here is things like skin breakdown from in, like, these are other complications, like mobility complications. Other things you want to consider um, are skin breakdown, and then um, lung complications like atelectasis, pneumonia, um, that kind of stuff. We'll talk about those. But anyway, um, blood clots. So just like there are fat clots, there are blood clots. And remember what is a um, some risk factors for blood clots. One is having um, like fractures or, um, you know, issues with uh, blood and stuff. I'm not saying that very well. Um, but um, issues where there is some sort of break breaking of tissue, um, interfering with blood vessels can inflammation in general, in, any sort of inflammatory process can lead to blood clots. But on top of that, immobility is a huge risk factor for blood clots. That's why all these patients are usually on VTE prophylaxis. They're usually on anoxaparin or heparin, um, like just the shots, um, just prophylactically. And then they may also have um, SCDs, TED hose, or other devices like foot pumps placed on them as well. Um, if they are unwilling to wear those, we do want to encourage them as ordered, you know, depending on their, um, uh, what do you call it, limitations that they might have. We also want to encourage like foot pump exercises or pumping their feet or a movement around that to um, movement around wherever the <clears throat> joint issue or the injury is to encourage good blood flow in that area. 
So especially um, femur fractures, hip fractures, they're very, very high risk. Um, in general, um, all fractures, I mean, just based on, uh, you know, having to be in the hospital procedures and other things are going to be higher risk for infection, but especially those that have open fractures or end up needing open um, reduction or surgery. Um, we have to do like if there's like, because a lot of times when these patients come in, they've had a trauma or something else going on. So they can end up having wounds. So we want to make sure to aggressively debride those, clean those. Um, they may need antibiotic irrigation or beads. They literally insert these antibiotic beads around in the wound to help them to heal. Um, and then they're usually getting perioperative antibiotics, like pre, during, post. Um, so just know you may be giving your patient some of those. Then the other ones that I do not have on here, which I obviously need to add are the atelectasis and pneumonia or higher chance of, because um, they're not taking deep breaths. So like incentive spirometer can help uh, make sure they're up and mobilizing as much as they are allowed to do. Um, movement helps. Um, and then those uh, co turn, cough, and deep breathe effectively are very helpful there. And then because of being immobile, they're also at risk for skin breakdown. So I like to, um, you know, get them repositioned, move. I need to monitor their pressure points, make sure there's nothing in the bed that can cause skin breakdown, regular assessments, and then um, making sure that their skin is protected and padded as needed. I think that's all I'm going to say for this. We'll go into medical treatments next. See you for that one.